When I started working at Marvel, I asked Stanley, how do you create the perfect Marvel character? He said, imagine Spider-Man. It's just a red and blue suit jumping off a building. But tell me who he is. Tell me what his problems are. And now, when he flies off that building, we're in that suit. Every moment along the way, the superhero has offered us a language to think about our personal identities. Who are you? Who do you want to be? My father did not like bullies. Comic books were the vehicle to protect people. What a powerful image. The Black Panther story is this idea of an untouched black space. It brought me to tears almost instantaneously. It wasn't pretend to me, it was real. It was like, you can tell stories about yourself. I transform into the most powerful entity in the hip hop universe. There was a time when Asian people in comics were colored yellow. I would just say, hey, maybe it's time we stop doing that. <laughs> Women are drawn with nail marks of toughness. Being a woman is different than that. The question is what you do from those mistakes. Do you learn from them? I had no idea that I was the first African-American writer in modern comics. She is just as good as the boys. Being a gay youth, comics were a great place to hide. For the first time, we kind of felt like we were part of the story. We developed a completely new voice. I love it. You look at any great Marvel story, I don't care who the character is, what the team is, it's always a great story about the person behind the mask. Hi there, it's Debbie. Did you know that in the 90s, Michael Jackson actually tried to buy Marvel Comics just so he could play Spider-Man? It might sound like a weird idea, but Stan Lee later admitted that he thought he would have been very good for the part. Who knows how that would have turned out? Remember to click below to subscribe, remember to tap the notification bell, or click on the side for more great content.